everybody! I am here to do my floss tube video. I am not at home as you can probably see. I came up to London to visit John and I've ended up staying on for a few days unexpectedly so I brought some cross stitch with me but I've finished all of that now and I don't have my other projects to show any updates on and I'm just generally in a bit of a mess. I have got two finished objects. The first one is Be Nice to People. This one is a quote by Josh Evans who's a YouTuber and I really like it. I think it's important to be nice to people so I have uh, charted this up and stitched it and it'll be available on my Etsy shop as well so if you think you'd like to have a go at one of these then the pattern for that is in the link down below. I have finally, finally finished this project. It has been weighing on my mind for months and you already know my thoughts on the floss. If you're gonna make a cross stitch kit and you don't provide enough floss with it, then that's just ridiculous. So I have finished the baby sampler. It was going really, really well until the last few bits when I only had not even half of the chart left to backstitch. And then I ran out of the brown, which is the color that I was using in the backstitching. And I found it really, really difficult to replace it. So. First of all, they have this big disclaimer on their pattern that's like, the number that is displayed by the floss is for reference only and does not actually correspond to the DMC colour that this is referring to because we use other floss. Why do that? Why put a DMC number if you're not actually gonna use the same colour as that number? It just doesn't make sense to me and I found it so, so difficult to find new floss for that so I've, I'm really not impressed. This is a Tobin baby sampler and I am going to be sending them an email just saying, first of all, provide enough stuff, second of all, if you aren't going to provide enough floss then make sure you give proper numbers so that people can actually replace the floss without too much incident. So it's taken me a really long time to do that because I had to go out into a shop and actually match up the floss with the pattern and um, I, didn't, I didn't go to a floss shop until I was on my way to London, what, three days ago. So yes, I was very much not impressed with that. I've had loads of feedback on my previous video and thank you all so much for leaving a comment on my dilemma of losing all of my needles. I think I didn't explain myself very well. The, the needle holder that I was using, the needle minder that I was using, is one that I have made myself. It's actually broken now, so it's all of a bit of a moot point. So it was this little penguin and I had these magnets on. Now these are rare earth magnets. I, I do use rare earth magnets when I make my own needle minders. And I had so many people saying, if you have a rare earth magnet, then this shouldn't be happening. And I think that nobody really understands how clumsy I am. <laughs> so I think that this is entirely user error. Like I was just being a bit of a klutz when it came to actually making sure that when I put my stuff away, I didn't brush up against radiators and things, which I found out is what happened. So. I actually realised that I had been making needle minders in my room a few weeks previously and one of the magnets had got stuck to my radiator which is near to the chair that I put my cross stitch projects on when I'm not using them. So what was happening is every time I was putting a cross stitch project down, the needle, if it got attracted to the radiator, was getting stuck onto the radiator. So when I finally found it, I discovered six needles on there with one of the gold John James ones as well. So I have learned a lesson in that and I'm also trying to be much more careful. I bought a little needle book from John Lewis, which um, it was on special offer, it was only £4. I am planning to, knit, to stitch one myself, I'll talk about that more in another video in the future when I'm a bit more organised. But um, this has just been really helpful because I've been making sure to, to just keep my needles, these are the cross stitch ones, uh, in there. And then I've got a few kind of sewing needles as well. I'm not sure if I'll keep them, they just came with, with the little book um, and I'm hoping that this is gonna this is gonna help. I've only had it for a few days, but so far no lost needles, so we're good. <laughs> I've been doing a bit of designing as well, so I hope that you are interested in that and I will talk about it in the next video. Um, I'm really into quotes at the moment. I, I was watching Big Bang Theory the other day and the, it's one of the very first episodes where Penny and Sheld uh, where Sheldon and Leonard are in Penny's flat and um, Sheldon is cleaning Penny's front flat and Leonard is leaning against the wall and Sheldon goes, if you have time to lean, you have time to clean. <laughs> 
I love that. So I'm definitely going to stitch that up. I'm really oh, so into the geeky stuff at the moment. Um, so it's all coming. And yeah, I've been having a go at making my own needle minders with resin, which has been fun, but um, quite tough. You don't really, you don't really think it's going to be as tough as it is. So I'll talk about all of that in the future when I'm back at home and I've got all of my stuff. But I just wanted to check in and show you my finished objects. I haven't decided exactly what's going to happen. The the sampler will be finished, finished, finished tomorrow because we have to post it off. Um, I'm already way late on actually getting it off to New Zealand. So I'll, I'll make sure there's a photo of that in the next video. I am going to do a very quick tag, which I quite liked the look of when I was scrolling through the uh, Trisha the left-handed stitches list of all the floss tube tags. I will leave a link to that in the box below. So today I'm doing the tips and techniques tag, which is by Mondot Stitches. It was posted in August 2015, so it's quite a long time ago, but I hope you enjoy it anyway. So the first question is, how do you keep your projects clean while working on them? I am really religious about making sure that my hands are washed. I wash them all the time. If I do anything that isn't stitching related, then I get up and I go wash them. I, I'm probably a little bit OCD about it. It doesn't always work because I try to remember to when I'm storing it to put it into a Ziploc bag, but sometimes I am just lazy and I either don't do that and just leave it out in the open, or I sometimes put it into fabric project bags, which is how I keep my knitting and that's just the system that I'm used to. So sometimes they get a bit grubby when they're in there, but um, they tend to not be too dirty. And one of the reasons I wanted to talk about that is because I just washed this this afternoon and it was not particularly grubby but it did have a few ring marks on it and I, I don't know if you can see that they're all gone. I generally only use DMC floss when I'm stitching because I do like to wash my pieces. I've never used a speciality floss that doesn't... Um, that isn't colour fast so I'm not entirely sure how I would approach using those but I do wash my pieces and I don't use fabric fabric cleaner I use shampoo because um, I found that it's the best at getting the like really stubborn stains off that are left by hoops that's just a thing that works for me and I also like that it sometimes makes the piece smell nice you know I, I think that's nice so make sure my hands are really clean but then also wash everything with shampoo and Carolyn Mazio did a really good video I can't remember which one it was but she was talking about a piece that she'd stitched for I think it was her father and it had some white in it and she didn't wash the piece after she'd finished stitching it and then years later she was showing us the piece and the white had tarnished because even though it looked clean when she originally framed it, obviously whatever grease was left over was affected by time. That kind of little thing that Carolyn did makes me remember to try do it, so thank you Carolyn. <laughs> Number two, do you have a tip or technique that hasn't been asked in previous tags that you would like to share? I'm not entirely sure because I haven't seen all of the tags. But I think probably the thing that helps me the most is I, I get little Ziploc bags and I put all my stuff in them so you can see like I've got the two bobbins of floss that were the only two that I needed when I came to London. But normally this Ziploc bag will have my pattern, my floss, my needle, a needle minder. Um, and then I also do this thing where I... Um, I chop my pattern into loads of little pieces, so I'm just going to be real quick about this because it is a copyrighted pattern, but this is my pattern, right, and then I'll chop it up into, into little pieces like this, and I measure those pieces out, so these ones are 40, 40 by 40 stitches, and you can see they're numbered on the back, so I number them so that I know which ones go across the page in which direction, and then I use this on my... Um, piece underneath my needle minder so that I don't have a have a thing where I have to like look all over the place I know that's a bit of an exaggeration um, to see my pattern and it really really helps me there are problems with photocopying patterns if you're going to photocopy them for other people but I photocopy them for myself and like now that I have finished this bunny moon I'm going to get rid of these pieces because they're annoying I don't really want them lying around um, but don't photocopy things if you're going to share them because that's not allowed <laughs> Those two things, so keeping everything in the Ziploc bag and then the cut-up pattern pieces really, really help me and I, I hope that they would help you guys as well. What advice would you share with a newer stitcher? That's number three. 
I probably say just enjoy yourself like it's a hobby and you don't need to get really like upset about things I got really upset when I first got into it really properly because I used a hoop and somebody said oh you shouldn't use a hoop it leaves marks on the fabric and yes it does leave marks on the fabric but you wash your piece and then you iron it and they're gone and I like working with a hoop that's that's okay and I it put me off stitching for a long time which I feel bad about now because I love stitching and I shouldn't have let somebody else tell me what to do and then make me feel so bad about it so just enjoy what you do you know it's fun and if somebody else is doing things their way then that's their way and if they find that cool then good but but you know just do it how you want to as long as you're happy with the piece at the end of the day then that's all that really counts isn't it be yourself enjoy it I think that's it from me for today so I hope you've enjoyed this video and thank you all so much for the subscribes I've, I'm on 450 at the moment which is just amazing I, I love having so many people who I feel like like watching and listening to me so thank you all so very much um, and for all the comments and everything as well I didn't do a specific Q&A from the previous video because most people were saying was I using rare earth magnets and my needle minders the answer is yes I am um, and uh, you know, I've already said I'm really clumsy. So yeah, thank you all so much and I hope you've enjoyed this Hopefully I will be back with a smaller break next time But who knows I can't my life is all over the place at the moment. So who knows what's going to happen? I'll see you all next time. Bye